So this is our third probability rules video. We're going to be looking at the last rules. We've already covered one through three and seven and eight. We're going to be looking at four, five, and six. And I also want to take a look at another skill uh, in this video that we haven't talked about yet. And that is calculating probabilities from data in a table. So far, everything that we've done in the previous videos, uh, we've been able to use theoretical probabilities because we've known enough about the background information to be able to do that. Um, but sometimes we'll actually have empirical probabilities that we're interested in calculating based on a certain number of trials and the outcomes of, of those trials. So here's the table that we're going to be working with. We're going to have three rows. There's male, female, total. And then there's going to be eye colors across the top. So we'll have blue, brown, green, hazel, other, and total here. And so let's see, let's fill in the rest of this table. There were six males with blue eyes, four females with blue eyes for a total of 10 blue-eyed students, 20 brown-eyed males, 16 brown-eyed females, 36 brown-eyed students, six males with green, hazel, or other, 12 females in that category for 18, which makes the row totals 32 males, 32 females, and 64 as the grand total of individuals in the sample. Okay, now let's just recap some of the probability stuff that we've talked about so far. Okay, so let's say first I wanted to calculate the probability of randomly selecting someone from this group with blue eyes. Okay, pretty basic, right? What's the probability of getting a person with blue eyes? Out of the 64, how many individuals have blue eyes? 10. Okay, 10 out of 64, or about 16%. Again, if you were going to leave this in fraction form, you would want to reduce that. B, what's the probability of randomly selecting someone who is female? Well, there are 32 females out of the 64 individuals, so that's a 50% chance here. Again, you could reduce this to one half. You could leave it as 0.5, or you can have it as 50%. Now, here's, um, let's see, let's look at an or rule since we've talked about those already also. So let's look at part C. What if I'm interested in the probability of randomly selecting someone who is female or has green, hazel, other? So I need to ask myself, are these two outcomes mutually exclusive? Well clearly here they're not. It is possible to randomly select someone who is female and simultaneously has green, hazel, or other eyes. There is an overlap there. So I need to use the general rule, which tells me probability of female plus probability of green, hazel, other, minus the probability of the overlap. So female and green, hazel, other. Whoops, green, hazel, other. There we go. So probability of female we already found earlier, it was 32 out of 64. Probability of green, hazel, and other, there's 18 out of 64. And now I need to subtract off their overlap. What's the probability of randomly selecting a female and someone with green, hazel, or other eyes? Well, there's 12 individuals that are simultaneously female and have green, hazel, or other eyes. So 12 out of 64. Okay. Crunch that all through, and we're looking at about 59%. Okay, so that's our OR rule. Now these are all rules that we've covered so far. You know, basic probability, probability of an OR statement. Probability of an AND statement we hadn't gotten to explicitly yet, but when you have data in a table it's pretty easy to look up the probability of that AND statement. So let's do a basic AND one next. So D, we're looking at the probability of randomly selecting someone who has brown eyes AND is male. Now from a table, we can simply pull this information off of here. We have 64 individuals in our group, 
And out of those, 20 of them are simultaneously male and have brown eyes. So we'd be looking at 20 out of 64, or about 31%. Now, if you look up your uh, multiplication rules in, um, in the book, it tells you to do this a little bit differently. This is the shortcut if you're using data from a table. But let's take a look at what the probability rules in the book actually say. And these are going to be rules four and five. Rule number four is actually a definition. It says events A and B are independent if probability of A is equal to probability of A given B. Okay, that's the definition of two events being independent. Now, what does independent actually mean? Independent simply means that event B has no effect on the probability of event A. So B has no effect on A. That's the, the informal definition. Here's what it looks like formally. Okay, and how do we read this piece? This is read as A given B. And what it means is if B occurs, what then is the probability of A? Okay. So here what we're saying is if B has occurred, the probability that A then occurs is the same as A occurring all by itself. In other words, B has no effect on A. That's exactly what that's saying. Now, why do we care about independence? Well, it turns out, just like our addition rules, we had two different versions of them depending on whether the events were mutually exclusive. Our multiplication rules, which are what we use for AND events, depend on whether the events that we're dealing with are independent or not. Okay, so these are our multiplication rules. These are for AND events. And there's two versions. There's the general that we can use regardless, and then there's the rule for independent events. Okay, in the general, probability of A and B is equal to probability of A times probability of B given A. For independent events, since this would simplify to just probability of B if the two events were independent, it's just probability of A times probability of B. So let's revisit this question here. What's the probability of getting a male that has brown eyes? Somebody who is brown eyed and is male. If I were going to use the formula for this, I would need probability of brown times probability of male given brown, since I don't actually know whether eye color and gender are independent. Probability of randomly selecting someone with brown eyes from our group, we had 36 out of 64. So 36 out of 64 times. Now, the way to calculate a conditional probability like this, male given brown, when you see that given brown, it's like we're only going to be looking at the brown part of the table. And out of that, what's the probability of randomly selecting a male? So we're only looking at the brown part of the table, which has a group of 36. And out of that group, randomly selecting a male would be 20 out of 36. When we do our cross-canceling here, we see it still gives us 20 out of 64, or about 31%. So that would be how to do the same problem with the formula almost just as easy to pull the 20 out of 64 out of the table to begin with. But you do have a choice there. You can use the formula, or you can just pull the data directly out of the table.
Okay, so that's our multiplication rules there. And then the only rule that we've not yet talked about uh, is rule number six here. Rule number six is our conditional probability rule. And it tells you how to compute that A given B thing. How do we compute that? Well, it's probability of A and B over probability of B. So let's say from my table I wanted to know what's the probability of randomly selecting a female given that we knew the person had green, hazel, or other eyes. So according to our formula, I need the probability of female and green, hazel, other divide by probability of green, hazel, other. So if we go back to our table here, probability of female and green, hazel, other, there were 12 out of 64. Probability of just green, hazel, other, there were 18 out of 64. Because I'm dividing two fractions, I take the reciprocal of the denominator and multiply. I can cross cancel here. I get 12 out of 18, which if we want to put that into decimal form or percent form, we're looking at um, about a 67%. That again is the way to calculate the conditional probability using the formula. But at this point, it's almost easiest just to pull this off of the table. And the shortcut there, whatever comes after the given bar, we're only looking at this part of the table and what then is the probability of a female. So out of green, hazel, other, so out of 18, what then is the probability of a female? 12 out of 18. Exact same thing that we got using the formula, but much faster to use the shortcut. One final thing that I want to mention from the table, and that is how we determine whether two outcomes are independent. So let's say what I'm interested in, I'm gonna get us a new piece of paper here. Let's say what I'm interested in is, um, how many parts have we done so far? A, B, C, D, oh, there's a B part, E, okay, E. From the data in this sample, does it appear eye color and gender are independent? Now certainly I could try and use my intuition to answer this, but that's not a really reliable way to determine when things are and are not independent. So I'm going to appeal to the definition of independent events. And again, this is rule four in that list of rules in the textbook. And it says that two events are independent if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B. That's the definition. Now, if I want to test eye color and gender, I need to pick a gender and pick an eye color. So I picked blue for the eye color and then the gender that I picked was female. So for example, to be independent, if I used blue eyes as my event A and female as my event B, to be independent, both sides of this would have to be equal. Well, probability of having blue eyes, if we go back to our table, there were 10 blue-eyed individuals out of our group of 64. Then blue-eyed given female. So now I'm looking only at the female row. And out of those 32 individuals in the female row, four of them had blue eyes. This side is about 
this side is 12.5%, are those equal? No. So in this sample, eye color and gender are not independent. And that covers all of our probability rules. Uh, in the next video, we'll be taking a look at different ways to come up with a total number of possible outcomes when it's not immediately obvious.